Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to a very, very special Raising a Warrior Meet this time. As you know, we are running our feature this time on death and bereavement, which is a ridiculously huge topic, uh, one that will evoke many emotions, many opinions. But as you know from everything you've seen with Naomi and myself over the last couple of years, we are fully, fully invested in talking about the tough stuff with children. We don't believe in shying away. They're actually more resilient than we give them credit for. And it's usually um, <coughs> our awkwardness that gets in the way of how much we talk about the tough stuff with children. So very, very special interview today with a very, very special man, Rick Hart. Thank you so much, Rick, for joining us. So back in 2018, uh, Rick and his wife, Jade, uh, had their first son, Hugo and tragically lost Jade within a couple of hours of the birth, which is just an unimaginable trauma for, for you, for your family, for everybody to have gone through. Um, and as anybody knows who has experienced grief, it never goes away, it changes, it just, it goes on its journey. But Rick has very, very kindly agreed to come and talk to us today about his journey but in particular about the strength and the positivity of that journey and how he's chosen to handle everything with his boy Hugo, who is three now, three, four, three. Yeah, he's, he's just, just uh, he was three this July, just gone. So yeah, nearly um, hit it. We're going on for three and a half now. <laughs> you can't forget the half. That's really important. Three and six months. <laughs> exactly. So, Rick, thank you so much for coming yeah. on today. Um, just, it means the world to us that you're here to share some of your journey with us. And in particular, as I said, we're going to really delve into how you've chosen to, to approach this whole journey with, with Hugo. So, thank you. So, over to Naomi to kickstart the interview. <laughs> Okay, so question number one is what three actions could a parent take to prepare their child for a sudden change? Well, this, it, that is a, a very interesting question. Um, and I remember uh, talking to Sam about this question previously and my answer is very different because Hugo came into the world without his, his mum. You know, Jade passed away hours after birth um at Bassett Law and and I was left alone with Hugo and I guess where I was at that point there was and I'll talk more in detail about where I was you know in my life then hmm. well, the one thing for me that I needed to do is find some form of strength to project the person I needed to be for myself and Hugo, but also know those decisions that I made were ultimately going to be the, the nucleus of Hugo growing up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as time went, times went on throughout my grief and my own ideas, I knew that all my ideas and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to execute it and the reasons behind it, all of that resilience, pure, deep inner strength uh, and focus and desire to actually do something completely out of a comfort zone. Um, Hugo, I know will look back and he's going to experience loss. Hmm. Hugo is going to experience loss in his life, you know. I don't know anyone that's got to the top or do, been, been successful in whatever they do and just had an easy ride every mm. day of their life. Um, so he's going to experience hardship. He's going to experience loss. So I guess the decisions that I've made, and we'll go into that in a bit more detail, I guess those decisions that I've made and why I've made them, not only for my own therapy and development and moving through my grief, but I also know it's all for Hugo. Mm -hmm. So there is times when he is going to feel extremely low. There's times where he's going to lose a loved one, you know, and, and I just hope that 
what I've created and how I've done it, which let's be right, what, what I've decided to do and how I've decided to do it in amongst websites, merchandise pages, trademarking this H symbol for Hugo, which was third superior book, my four, Chris, uh, my four children's books, my autobiography. It's a very unique process through grief. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess those steps will be Hugo's nucleus because when he, when he has hardship, I want him to pick up a book and find strength in his superhero book. You know, when he feels he needs to, you know, go on an adventure or just lose himself a little bit, he'll have his Thailand book. And the, the Nighttime Adventures book is beautiful because that's, that was the first book and that was really the journey of, of losing mummy and daddy and Hugo going, these, going on these adventures. And there's various Im images in that book that talk about the loss. Uh, and really some really specifics in there, which I'll go into, because I want to talk a little bit more about my books. I'm sure you've got a question about my books. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's really my answer for that question, because it's, it's, it's not like he's six years old and he's, he's lost his mum at six or ten, and he's already established a relationship and he's lost his mum at six or ten, you know, I'm, I'm a very, very positive guy, and this is a positive, but it, it isn't a positive at the same time. But the one thing Hugo doesn't have here is pure, deep emotion of the loss of Jade. Mm. He's not gone through it. He's, he, was yeah. a, he was a boy, he was a ba uh, baby, a born baby. And so, but the one thing I really wanted to do is create this legacy and something that was always going to be here forever. So at whatever given point, when he starts to get a little bit older, he starts to ask questions, understand more, see what daddy did, see why daddy did it, and try and find belief and strength as he, go, as he grows and, and, go, and goes older. So, um, you know, and <clears throat> I read these books to Hugo at night all the time, and he gets into bed and he's got a big bookshelf in front of his bed and... And uh, it's story time every night. And, you know, um, my new partner, she does a hell of a lot of it and opens up all these new stories and, and uh, journeys for Hugo. But he always, when it's daddy's time, it's always like daddy's book. And he always chooses one of the three. And we sit there and we read the book. Um, and, and that's just beautiful, really, for Hugo, because that is really the empowerment of what I've done and why I've decided to do it. Because what are the best, what is the, I, I, I through this was through my ideas. What is the best way to find uh, a way to, to allow a child to understand, but have interest? Yeah. Because let's be right, you know, death to a child, it's, you're literally doing that. Yeah. So I literally thought, what is the direction here? And I thought books, because he's going to start reading books and I want him to understand through the books, the, the journey I went on and what I decided to do and why I decided to do it. Um, so yeah, it's been a very, it's been a very emotional journey for me. Of course it has. Um, yeah. But also as well, it's been a very powerful one and a very unique journey, but also, you know, the steps that, I believe I need to take, you know, I, I look back now and think, you know, I, I, that was my, that was my journey and, and I needed to do that. Um, I always said to, always said to myself after, you know, Jay died and literally I said to myself, I will shout to the nines about our life and find a direction to do the best I can with Hugo. And that was my promise to Jade, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that um, I fulfilled that. And that does wonders for me in here. Um, but, you know, I guess for me, life's not really about the destination. It's, it's really the journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I sit now and I'm having, I'm having a bit of a break now from the books. Yeah. And I've, at the moment, you know, hung the, the cape up and, and I'll come back 
if I feel that like I want to come back to my public health journey later on in, in life at what's whatever point, yeah. you know. But you know, I look back now and it was all about the journey because mm-hmm. the destination is right now. I've yeah. gone through it, the books are published, the websites are up and running with their own special meanings, yeah. everything's in place, the infrastructure is effectively built. Mm-hmm. And and I look back now and I'm like, yeah, it's 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 all about the journey. Um and it was huge therapy for me, uh, Naomi. Huge therapy. You know, I went through some some, some real, real hard times, and um, you know, lockdown with Hugo as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, when I look back now, we're, you know, we're, we're nearly touching three and a half years since since Jade died, and a good year and a half of that is lockdown and the aftermath of lockdown. So. Yeah. You know, nearly, nearly hot. Fifty percent of my my deep grief journey was in lockdown. So, you know, and that was my answer, really, to 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 put all these ideas into place. Yeah, it's incredible. It's so amazing. It, it, it just is. I mean, I I, kn- I knew that I would be <laughs> really lost for words, both for the tragedy of what you've been through and also the awe of what you've achieved. So I think I'm just going to be doing a lot of amazing, <laughs> incredible, you're amazing. Um, so when when you're talking, when a parent is talking about, um, about death and loss with a child, what kind of language do you feel is the best language to use? Do you use direct language? <laughs> with you guess, or indirect? What's your take on that? I guess it's a bit of both. Um, and you know it's it's a bit like kids toddlers babies they're all so unpredictable so throughout my grief journey you know and i look back now and and my god what a roller coaster and and it still is grief stays with you forever and 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 sometimes we feel we've got a handle on it and you go you know what i, I feel quite good today or this week or whatever mm-hmm. but it say it really does stay with you, and I guess based on my emotional roller coaster and state, depended on how direct and indirect I was with Hugo and have been. But I always knew and know that as he gets older, I know I'll become more direct because he's yeah. still on that on a learning curve. He's, he's only yeah. three and a half. Yeah. So when I go to my first book, so Hugo and Daddy's Nighttime Adventures was my debut children's bereavement book, and that book. Um, I don't know if you've you've seen a copy of that book, but the Nighttime Adventures book is basically um, it, it's so funny as we look at that how I was di- designing that front cover in lockdown. Uh, I think it was what April May 2020, and literally sitting there sketching this rocket and me and Hugo flying off to this to this star. So the first book really and all the images were all about the interpretation and for Hugo to understand that mummy's in the sky and me and Hugo have gone on this journey and, you know, she's, she's in the sky, she's flying high. And it was really focused around that. Mm. So, you know, he, he goes to bed at times and, and I'm sat there reading a book to him and, and he'll go, mummy Jade in the sky. And he doesn't do it all the time, but he does do it. Um, you know, often, and he knows it, kids are sponges. Mm. Like you said, the resilience of children and what they take in it is phenomenal. Even though we don't think that they're taking in and understanding, they are absolutely more clever than we think. And he takes it in, and you know, he's got some beautiful images in his bedroom of of Jade, and um, you know, all the images of 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 his books and. Um, yeah, that's that's my language to answer that question, to be direct. My language is through my first book. So mummy's in the sky, mummy's in heaven, she's flying high, she's an angel. Um, and that is really the book. That is the first half of the book. And um, you know, if I if I just flip to to some of the some of the uh, images, you know, I, it's crazy when I look back because I always have this vision of or me and Hugo in bed reading in this storybook and, um, you know, this 
this teddy was was lovely. Jade's family made that for him from one of Jade's Jade's clothing. So he still cuddles that at night now. You know, when I'm reading in one of the books, he's always like, "Oh, I want my teddy because that's Teddy Jaden now because we named him Jaden in one of the books." Yeah. So, and you know, and and that was it really. And the, you know when I, you know when I had a life before July 2018. You know, I had a career. You know, it was me and Jade, and and I look back down and go, "Wow, God!" Like if someone said to me, you know, five years ago, you're going to go on a book author journey and all this sort of stuff. Not the reason, but just you're going to go on a book author journey. I would have gone, no chance. Like mm. I genuinely, I'm not literate. I'm not right. This is the truth. I'm not very good at English literature. I've never been a poet. I've never done poetry my whole life. Um, I believe also as well, like I've got off a, a, a mild form of dyslexia. I find it really hard to read books and understand certain things the way certain people would probably understand. And yeah. so doing this journey is just so unique. And when I, when I had inspiration to do all of this, um, before I really started to push this, somebody gave me a book and a very um, very well-known author and illustrator it was through the family and they gave me a book and it was a silent book and it was about a dad and a mummy and mummy gave birth and mummy disappeared and it was just father and son and it was just this silent book um, I think it was it's called Wilder off the top of my head right. and it's a silent book and you go through it and you're like mummy's given birth and she's gone and this person was like I made this book 18 months before Jade passed away and I feel this book is for you. This book was meant to be for you. Nobody else on this planet. The book came to me and I got a lot of ex a lot of inspiration from it. And then also I did this love book online as well for me and Jade and that was it. And at that point I went, books. Like Jade's, Jade's uncle um, is a, did a lot of the designs and illustrations for Snowman and the Snow Dog. Oh, right. So he's, you know, done absolutely incredible in his own right. But again, some of the things he did, did inspire me. And this was one of the reasons why I did this, because this reminds me of, of Hugo and Jade, and Jade flying through the sky and Hugo with Jade. And it reminds me of Snowman and the Snow Dog, or the Snowman effect. And Jade loved the Snowman. So it's all these little real personal deep things mm -hmm. like this that drive me to go, I'm going to do a page that represents this. Now, you yeah. wouldn't know this. Nobody else would know this unless yeah. I start talking about what I did and why I did it. Yeah. And it's just, there's just a lot of inspiration. Um, and, you know, they, those were, you know, one of Jade's last words, you know, I can't believe his hours. And again, you know, nobody knows that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, I just, just, Hugo loves the, uh, the sea and the sand, and that's where we got married in Thailand, in Koh Samui. Um, and I wanted to make it really, you know, full of adventure and know that we will go on adventures. You know, there was lots of adventures to come for me and Hugo. And one of the beautiful things I did in, in lockdown is I learned the guitar. I've listened to a couple on Instagram. <laughs> I self-taught a little bit, and I literally just brought YouTube up and just started to play and learn and... I learned the calling, I will go wherever you will go, uh, which is uh, one of my tattoos. Yeah. And also uh, A Thousand Years, Christina Perry, which was our song at, at yeah. Cosimo at the wedding. So, yeah, it's been just a very unique journey, but I wouldn't have changed anything um, because I needed to do what I needed to do, really. Mm. I know it's, it's obviously, it's really apparent as well through all of this that you have wanted to communicate to Hugo that Jade still exists in some form. Yeah, yes, in some form. Physically yeah, here. This is something that we've put in our book, you know, <laughs> in, our, in our online course, death is not a, you know, a line where yeah. it, it just, somebody ceases to exist. It's, it's transformation of, yeah energy and whether that's somebody living on a star whether that's a memory kept alive a song whatever it is that's also very special to us as well that we've communicated through ours and you can tell that that's 
was so important for you and you know for Hugo growing up mummy's she's not gone she's just she, it's a different state of she's, she's, entered a, she's entered a new world and yeah. she's up there and she'll always be looking down on you and and be proud of that and she'll be proud of you um so yeah you know Jade's memory um will always be there you know uh, always yeah. you know I, I you know just to just to come away from the books when I when I when I was going through my book journey and, and I was pushing on to release my first children's book Nighttime Adventures it was probably a few months before I decided to create a website which is jadeharpuppylove.co.uk one p in puppy and I decided to create this website which again is there forever and it's a platform and it's a memory of Jade and it's a memory of us. It's, it's our Thailand uh, dream. You know, it's the, the books and the journey. You know, one of the pages is books in memory. And I remember creating it and there was only one book. But I thought, I feel there's more. I feel there's, you know, it will just come to me. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Really acting on your intuition and acting and going with your heart and gut and just making it happen. Instead of just literally, I've got a great idea, or I'll park that, because you'll forget yeah. about it. Do you know what mm. I mean? So, and I did this website, which is also, I do some blogging as well on there now and again. But that website, the sole purpose of that website was to bring people together and share some beautiful memories of Jade. And that will always carry on forever because people are still uploading beautiful photos of Jade. Mm. And, you know, if you think as well, all the people that have pictures on their phones of Jade, friends, best of friends, family, distant family, work colleagues, yeah. all these people have had some form of experience through Jade's life. And they have some form of images of nights out, you know, days out together, holidays, beautiful memories. So the website is there as and when people want to and are ready, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, I, you know, I really want people to do this. It's up to them. You know, mm. as long as me and close family are using it, you know, that's, that's, that's beautiful, but it's, it's, it's for everyone to literally go check this photo out. Has anyone seen this? You know, and, and I go on, on the website now and again, and look at certain photos and go, I've never seen that photo before. So, and that's what it's about. It's about sharing those images and literally getting some form of beauty from it to go this person's life and memory will never fade and this person will always live on and again Hugo is going to when he gets that little bit older he's I'm going to be sitting there he's going to be by my side and I'll be like look at this son this is your mummy's website this is what daddy did why he did it this is all the people that I've interacted this is all the Im images you know and and he's just going to be like wow 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 yeah. Well, I hope he does. Anyway, so you know yeah. that was one of that was a, another a, a big a big part of the the jigsaw yeah. that I did. Uh, that was June last year in lockdown, just coming out of lockdown. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. So, do you feel um, that we should be talking to children about death and loss before they experience it? Uh, yes, in a nutshell. Um, yeah, I like that answer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big yeah. believer in that one. Yeah. I think I think we should. Hey, you know, as I say, I, I'm already giving these messages to Hugo, mm -hmm. and um, there's an, an image of Jade in his bedroom, and and he's he, it was the other night I was reading him. I think I was reading him Town Adventures because he's into Town Adventures now massively. Yeah. And that's another another beautiful epic step that me and him will take in time to come when he's the right age yeah. to go and take all the steps that me and Jade did and really experience that in a beautiful form. But he was looking at a photo in his bedroom and and he and he said, "Me and Mummy's tummy." He said, "Me and Mummy's tummy." So he knows he's yeah. he's, he's starting to get it and understand it. Um, but yeah, I think you've 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 got to be. I personally. Um, want to be direct and be up, up front and honest about death with Hugo because it is a part of life. We are all yeah. going to die at some point. And it's only we're, guarantee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And taxes. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
so we're all we're all we're all placed on this planet to 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 grow uh, and evolve and and be the best human beings we can be and have the right people around us and you know go and inspire or everyone has their own journey but you know yeah we, we all we all live we all die and, and I just feel like you know Jade had 33 beautiful years beautiful years you know we met when we were 17 18 and um and her memory will always live on but I guess also as well us grievers have to sometimes literally just think outside the box and just just know that we can create um that memory and keep that memory alive and be proud you know be proud you know me coming on here today to talk isn't easy trust me it's really not and um yeah it's 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 i i i i just wanted and always projected me just just becoming a better version of myself through an absolute tragic set of circumstances um so so yeah you know and and grief acts in different ways and people either have the strength or they don't or they have to really go and find it like you know when i go back to when i first you know july 2018 and i'm left with hugo and that was it you know i lost my whole entire life I lost my, my my direction. I lost my career. I lost everything. But I had to literally just have pure. I had to just rely on some form of inner strength. Like it's ridiculous. Like I I went on a huge running journey as well. Like you know I my anxiety would hit the roof, and I had to go on this running journey to deal with all of my problems through my running. Mm. I, I, I would have, and I'll be open and honest, I would have massive panic attacks every time I go running. And I deal with it running with yeah. 160 beats per minute, sweating, breathing, beautiful air in, in the countryside, trying to get rid of all these negative images yeah. and turn these negative images into positive images and, and create a shift in my mindset. Yeah. And the running did that because... You know, as as single mothers know, <laughs> I was feeding Hugo by the bottle every two hours mm. in the gutter, in the gutter, and I would get, and I had support from family that would come around and watch Hugo or take him away for a few hours, and and I wouldn't literally go. I need to sleep because I had two hours sleep last night or three hours sleep last night, and I can't function. I said to myself, I need to go and run 12 kilometers because I need to go and run away. And that's what I did. I ran away. And and that was my outlet. That was my way of dealing with it. That was my way of sobbing. That was my way of dealing with all of my anxiety and uh, my attacks out in the country and and deal with it all all deep throughout that running. And the short story is we did lots of beautiful, uh, you know, charity runs and and 10K runs for Jade. And I did the, the half marathon at Retford. And then I pushed on and did the Yorkshire Marathon in October 2019, and I did that solo on my own, uh, wow. which I'm very proud of. And, you know, I'm more built for weights other than running, so it's not natural for me, but I did it. But I always promised Jade, and I always said to Jade, even when she was alive, she did nine months of pregnancy, and I said, when the baby comes, I'm going to train for nine months and do the marathon, and you're going to both be at the end of the finishing line. Mm. so we spoke about that yeah so yeah. I needed to follow that through and I did and I was really proud so I went all the way and got the marathon done and and then it, and then you, you know you step into 2020 lockdown hits you know all these ideas were coming to me through my running and and that was it that was the light bulb you know because I mm. hit rock bottom rock bottom March April you know and, and not seeing a soul for 12 weeks yeah. is you know a bit in, in, in Misterton um literally just walking down the back lanes and doing what I needed to do and being in the house. And that was it. I, I went right, pen to paper. But also as well, I've not mentioned this, but you know, I wrote, wrote my autobiography, Puppy Love. Um, yeah. And that was that was published 14th of February last year on Valentine's Day, because the 14th of February is a very special day. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and there's lots of meaning behind that. So again, as I was doing these children, my first children's book, I was writing 2,000 words every morning at 5.30 wow. before I knew Hugo would wake up ready for his bottle or whatever he needed. Yeah. And again, that was an emo emotional roller coaster because I was writing some real hard points. Yeah. So I was in tears most mornings. And then other mornings, I was like, oh my God, I'm writing about something really epic me and Jade did and some yeah. crazy Thailand trek we did in some really random cave or island or whatever. So again, that was just huge emotional roller coaster. But all of, the, all of my book journey is just pure therapy for me. It was, it, it was self-healing, self-healing and pure therapy. Um, not many people have the strength to take that or go through that journey, but my advice to anyone that's lost out there is, you know, if you've got an idea and you want to do something in memory or do something completely different, you know, just go and do it. Yeah. Just go and do it. Just do whatever you can to make that happen. If it's tiny little steps to make that happen and it takes you three years or six months or five years, take the steps. Because yeah. guess what? As I've said, it's the journey. It's trust yeah. me, it's the journey. It's not the destination. So, yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah I've, I've gone off a little bit there, but no, don't worry, don't not worry. at all. Yeah. The uh, the clock is ticking. Um, the final question was all about your books, which you have uh, answered really well throughout the the interview, and it was about what in particular you know about writing the books helped you with your journey, and also helped you communicate that to Hugo. Yeah, and yeah. I think you. You've definitely um, given us some some real yeah. insight into that throughout the interview. Um, could, I, could I add? Could I add just yeah. a, a, a little bit more, just on the book? So, you know, when when I was going through this this process, and you know, you know, my, the debut book came out. Um, that was twelfth of October. So these have all been framed and plaqued, yeah. and you know, they're, they're lovely. So that was the uh, the twelfth of October that was published. Um, I had this 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 feeling of giving back, you know, adding some form of val some form of value. So I just thought I'm going to link my books to charity, and what better way, you know, because there's people out there grieving people that need support, and there's beautiful charities out there that do exactly that. Yeah. So talent, Natal Adventures was linked to Cruise Bereavement Care, the national charity, and they helped me and and really pushed the exposure out there. The first book, by the way, got to the second bestseller on Amazon, and it was sitting there for about three, four, just under a month. It was sitting in second spot, and then about five weeks in the top, in the top 15, 20 bestsellers. And, that's just, and I didn't think of any of that, because right now, and looking back, these books are just for Hugo, but I wanted to publish them, because if it helps one person out there, that's the goal. Yeah. And the person is probably me. And was me. If it helped me and it did something for Hugo, goal yeah. achieved, goal achieved. Yeah. So all the other, that was a, this other book as well rolled on to um, rolled on to the second, the Town Adventures was the second one. So Hugo wakes up the next morning and we go on this beautiful adventure. Again, the Town Adventures and the Superhero book, which was my third book, his superhero book, and the H sign, which has been trademarked, and we've got a merchandise page for him. Uh, you can see the T-shirt on at the moment. So the yeah. Thailand and Superhero book have been linked to the Children's Bereavement Centre in Newark as well. Yeah. So again, meaning, deep meaning, giving something back, yeah. you know, and just creating that 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 purpose and creating that yeah. bit more strength, really. So yeah. and I'm, I'm grateful to all the charities that I've helped yeah. and supported so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've got a Christmas book as well. So I've got... I've got I know. It's funny. Now, so we're we're mid-October, mid so I've got another... We've got about another eight weeks to, to push yeah. on with, and there's some other, uh, you know, good exposure of that come in and yeah. some other books and bobs. Yeah. So, yeah, again, Amazing. exciting to push that through to the end of the year. It's incredible. We will definitely, definitely be providing links to all of your books yes. and certainly the, the charities that you've been helping to support and who have been supporting you and people in situations like yours. But, um, yeah, just... Uh, sorry to be sort of wrapping this up quite quickly. I don't want it, I don't want it to cut off before we've said goodbye. Um, but Rick, thank you so much, really, from all of us at Raising a Warrior for taking the time to come on and speak with us today. It's been a very, very special interview. And I'm sure anybody watching who has experienced anything like your 
uh, situation or even haven't experienced it, it will touch a lot of people. And we just uh, wish you all the very best mm -hmm. for the future with Hugo and your books and also a well-deserved break. <laughs> by yeah. the of things. Well, thanks so, for inviting me on anyway. You know, it's been a pleasure. And, no problem yeah, at all. Fun. So thanks for watching everybody. Goodbye from me and Naomi. And we shall see you soon for another uh, Raising a Warrior meet. Uh, oh gosh, where's the stop? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we'll do the interlude. Do, 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 do. <laughs>